breakfast is their worst meal of the day. Now this might come as a shock to most people, because there is this big misconception that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. It is not the most important meal, but far from it. If you want to live longer while looking younger, have less body fat and reduce the risk of cancer along with many other diseases, breakfast is the worst meal of the day. Now I will explain what I mean by that, but first... Hey man, are you gonna subscribe to Prime? I'm rolling! I'm a big fan of implementing easy steps to get huge results, and that's exactly what you will get using this approach. It is called intermittent fasting. Research on intermittent fasting started as early as before the Second World War, where they tested it on rats, but it has never really been popularized until very recently. And their research proved that rats increased their lifespan significantly and were less likely to develop cancer. They also found that rats brought up on intermittent fasting grew perfectly and had less body fat than other rats. But why has these impressive discoveries never been endorsed to society earlier? One reason is simply because the media and big corporations doesn't want you to know this. Intermittent fasting doesn't cost a thing and corporations find it hard to make money from it. If the food industry endorsed intermittent fasting, it might as well run out of business. Researchers began studying the effects of people during the Islamic holy month of Ramadan, where Muslims avoid eating from sunrise till sunset, and once the sun sets they pretty much binge eat. Initially, scientists believed that this shift from eating throughout the day to restricting the window of eating to only a few hours would cause catastrophic health problems. Their prediction was that people would get fat and ill from literally gorging without portion control. However, the results proved the exact opposite. They were losing fat, keeping muscle, reducing the risk of high blood pressure, heart disease and diabetes without any special foods. Tell me another approach that brings this kind of drastic results and is so easy to implement. All you have to do is not eat breakfast. You should know that intermittent fasting is not a diet you are not gonna restrict your calories. It's not unused, you ought to be it's not unused, you, ought you will only need to restrict the time you eat throughout the day, typically to 8 hours. It's really that simple. If you eat your last meal around 8 p.m. and skip breakfast the next morning to have your first meal around noon, you have successfully fasted for 16 hours, leaving you with an 8 hour eating window. Within this 8 hour eating window, you should aim for 2 to 3 meals. But uh, what about 6 small meals a day? You gotta keep metabolism high and avoid starvation mode. 6 small meals a day. If you eat 2000 calories within 6 small meals, compared to eating one huge meal of 2000 calories, you will still burn the same 2000 calories. If you keep eating 6 small meals a day, your chances of burning fat reduces because the body will get its energy from glycogen storage and blood sugar keeping fat reserves intact and unused. Glycogen and blood sugar will become depleted first after 6 to 8 hours without eating and once you wake up and have breakfast you will restore that depletion. By eating every 2 to 3 hours you will never allow fat storage to be used as energy and I've talked more about this subject in another video that you can watch here. Starvation mode do exist, but it doesn't come into play until 72 to 96 hours after completing the last meal. That's 3 to 4 days, not 3 to 4 hours. The reason for this all stems back to our ancestors. They had to hunt and gather food in order to survive, and it would often take them several days for them to do that. As humans we are meant to alternate between fasting and feasting, between going for long periods without food and then eat huge amounts of food in a short time. It's only very recently in our long history that humans have access to food all hours around the clock. And it's also one of the reasons so many people are sick and obese. Intermittent fasting also has incredible effects on releasing natural human growth hormone. And Dr. Michael van der Schelden talks about this on his fantastic YouTube channel, which I will link in the description. Human growth hormone, also known as the fitness hormone, is responsible for a number of health benefits such as fat loss, muscle growth, longevity, anti-aging, healing, cell repair amongst others. And we have known for a long time that when we sleep, that's when we release most of our growth hormone. And this is because insulin and human growth hormone are indirectly related. And when insulin is elevated, you cannot release human growth hormone. 
insulin is only released after you've had a freshly consumed meal. Now when you sleep you haven't consumed a meal for some time and the insulin drops making the body release human growth hormone. Now what's so special and unique with intermittent fasting is that you expand the time of fasting which allows significant amounts to be released. I'm not talking about 50 or 60% increase, which would also be fantastic. I'm talking 1300% for women and up to 2000% for men of pure natural release of human growth hormone. These numbers are unheard of. It's absolutely ridiculous. You might not agree with this or think I make these numbers up. However, there is scientific research to back it up. Yes, science! Another huge benefit that comes with intermittent fasting is the effects it has on the brain. As I discussed earlier, when you're in that fasted state with no glycogen, the body turns to fat for energy. And as this happens, ketone bodies are released into the bloodstream, which your brain prefers over other sources of energy. The release of ketones will increase your focus, concentration, ability to remember, while simultaneously reducing the risk of Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. It also increases the BDNF, the brain-derived neurotrophic factor, by 400%, which helps activate stem cells in the brain to make new brain cells, neurons and nerves. Now, do you still feel like eating breakfast at this point? I hope I managed to convince you somewhat to at least check out the possibility to skip it. Try it for a few weeks and evaluate how you feel. It will be tough for the first week or two, but once the body gets used to it, you won't look back. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to keep yourself primed.